Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to look at a 1200 US graphics card attached to a 950 US dollar uh, box in the Alienware. Uh, I've done this through the graphics amp that Alienware supplies um, and it's a special port so it's not a Thunderbolt uh, and it's a proprietary port that Dell claim that is actually faster or has a much more bandwidth than a Thunderbolt 2. Uh, they haven't come out and said anything about the Thunderbolt 3 but uh, that's all we know so far. So clearly we're going to have some improvement between the standard Alienware and the Alienware with a Titan X attached. But what I've also included in the testing was my test bench, which is a 6700K desktop with a Titan X. And just to see what kind of performance differences we're going to have uh, there, there is a CPU difference between the two so uh, certain encoding tests you're going to see uh, the 6700k uh, speed up quite a bit compared to uh, the 6700t in the uh, Alienware Alpha but still it'll get you a rough indication of how far off um, a desktop and a portable sort of solution is. I won't bother running through the graphics amp, there's plenty of videos on YouTube uh, showing you that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump straight into some of the benchmarks and we're going to see the differences. Okay, so straight up into the synthetic stuff, you've got the Geekbench 4 CUDA test and we see a huge leap in performance with the Titan X compared to the 960M um, and only a little bit of drop between the two uh, Titan Xs and you know that could be bandwidth. Uh, playing a part there. Same thing in OpenCL, the same sort of gap between all of them that we had in the CUDA and the desktop just slightly edging out the graphics amp. Uh, onto Luxmark 3 running the Sala uh, in 2.1. Uh, once again, we're seeing the same sort of difference between the two Titan X's, only marginal, and a, and a crazy huge boost in um, uh, the 960M to the Titan X. Same thing with Luxball 3. Uh, as you can see, the performance is pretty much, I would call it, you know, probably maximum 5% loss there. Um, Cinebench OpenGL test, uh, marginal uh, loss again. Uh, and, you know, as we go through all the rest of them, there's, everything's within 5%. Okay, now into some uh, encoding tests that I've done. Um, and the first one's DaVinci Resolve. It's a great effects and it's export. It's a two minute red 4K file and we're exporting to H.264 in 1080p. Uh, here we saw a huge improvement um, between the 960M and the Titan X Pascal and then a small improvement between the other two. Uh, onto Premiere Pro, it's a great effects and export. Uh, two minute ProRes file, uh, it's a 4K file and we've, we're exporting it to H.264 in 1080p. Um, here we didn't see too much of a difference um, and I think you know the CPU uh, here is playing most of the part in the encoding. Um, DaVinci Resolve, great effects export. This is a 15 minute red 6K and we're exporting it to UHD, DNX, HRHQ. Um, only the desktop could crack it with under 10 minutes out of 9 minutes 20 and the other two uh, only a marginal by one minute uh, in photoshop uh, here we saw the titan x and the alienware do it in half the time so huge improvement there and then we saw about a 25 percent increase on the desktop and lastly, a quick one, um, just to check how we went on the candlelight benchmark with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, obviously all three cards could get the 25 frames per second. Jumping straight into the 60 Blue Note test, we've got the desktop doing 22 frames per second, the Alienware with the Titan X doing 16 frames per second, and the 960M doing five frames per second. So huge improvement there with the Titan X connected to the uh, AGA. Jumping straight into the 16 anodes, um, once again, here we've got 18 frames per second for the desktop, 12 frames per second for the Alienware with the Titan X, and 5 frames for the 960M. 